Hello everyone, this is Lex from Dead Gentry Collectibles and this is going to be a multi-part little video series on cameos starting with history. So if you're not interested in the history of cameos, you can skip right over this video to the next one. But if you are, cameos are one of my favorite things to collect. Nothing shown here is genuine or made of genuine materials such as gemstone, uh, shell. These are all replicas. They're um, fakes is another word for it. So how old is the tradition of cameo making? If you think about it from the perspective of relief creation, that is carving figures into positive spatial structure from a material, much like those wedge woods in the background as well, then cameos can be dated back to Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt to 15,000 BCE. Um, those are called petroglyphs in Egypt, full designs, entire figures carved from solid rock. But certainly the technology and the tradition was already there. When we talk about bas relief, B-A-S, relief, when you Google it, we're talking about a sculptural relief form in which the projection from the surrounding surface it rises, you're, so you're cutting away to leave a positive space behind. The modeled form is undercut. Um, so a sculpture executed that way, often known as bas-relief, is a piece of artwork that is sculpted or carved, molded in such a way that it barely, you know, it rises from, it seems to rise from a flat surface. Sculpting, you know, onto a two-dimensional plane to create um, and accentuate figures and objects producing a 3D appearance. So think of the Madonna of the Stairs by Michelangelo, uh, Donatello's Feast of Herod, beautiful artistic reliefs. Cameos are reliefs, but they're also a form of, and here's a big fancy appraiser's word, glip. Photography. That starts with a G, and that's the study, the artistry of gem engraving. Uh, cameos can also be done from shell or stone, but they're known as, you know, glyptographs. They're, it's glip glyptography, where you engrave into a solid surface. So it's a relief of engraving. I'm not going to discuss intaglios too much here, even though some are shown right over here, um, to cut away from behind instead of into the negative space. I'm not sure if you can see that on these. See how this is smooth? It's actually cut, it's undercut from behind. That's an intaglio style. So I'm not gonna discuss that too much, but usually with cameos, hard materials. So they can, you know, uh, replicas, fakes, costume jewelry, um, often made you know from glass from plastics from acrylics from resins but when they're made from authentic materials hard materials so a very hard shells hard stones gemstones semi-precious gemstones because it's easier for the artisan to do their job softer materials tend to break crack fissure they're too fragile under the pressure of carving so usually harder materials are used to make them in the roman times you know so egypt you had um and then to roman you have you know pliny the elder uh 23 ad he wrote about cameos as costume jewelry so not just the tradition of cameos but the tradition of costume jewelry itself dating all the back all the way back to ancient rome um talking about how glass was being produced as cameo jewelry for people uh lower classes who couldn't afford a pieces carved from gems so the tradition of costume jewelry goes back very far too and you know there are gemstone cameos especially older pieces for the higher classes there was a lot of trade going on a lot of open trade routes connecting egypt to the world you know think of your history a little bit of caesar coming to cleopatra for grain you know practically bankrupt uh, to feed his armies his soldiers so you had roman trade connections through egypt you had many mediterranean trade connections nearly all of greece all of greece is soaked in the history and artistry of cameo creation. Usually 
um, from Greece mythological figures because in many ways, like a lot of different forms of art and jewelry, um, it's a record of what was important to the people of those regions at those times. So coming out of Greece, you'll see a lot of scenes, depictions of gods, of heroes, say like Hercules, which was their, you know, version of famous celebrities. And then down through the years, those famous celebrities became, you know, kings and queens, earls and mistresses. So you get an idea as you're moving forward through time, what kind of figures are being presented. And these pieces of jewelry, they remained popular, not just because of their beauty, not just because of the artistry involved in the historic precedents, but also because it became culturally attributable as a status symbol. So when you think of the history of cameos, um, and much like today, say a man's fancy watch, more than just the cost of the watch or the name brand itself, um, a watch can speak as a status symbol in a subtle way uh, to someone's, you know, um, status in society, their wealth and their power. It's a subtle visual representation that other people associate with a certain class within a culture. Cameos, much like say a Rolex watch, they were that status symbol. So you have, you know, much like today, someone fancy might wear that watch. Then it would have been all the finest ladies wearing them as brooches and pendants. Um, you see them at, um, a lot of times as, as collar pins uh, for women. And men had them as, you know, as rings and as pins, as tie pins, as cufflinks. Popes displayed them and wore them as rings. So cameos throughout history maintained this very high popularity all through the Renaissance, through the Elizabethan period, and then again in the 19th century. In the 19th century, moving more forward through history, you had Queen Victoria was an avid a patron and collector, as was Napoleon. Napoleon commissioned an entire school, paid for, built, funded an entire school to create cameos, to uh, hire and train artists to carve pieces in this amazing traditional, you know, two layer style from single um, hard materials. So we're say something like a shell, for instance, is carved forward to create a texture and color contrast from a single, a single piece. shell cameos, especially from the Mediterranean. So, you know, you had Napoleon repopularizing, repopularizing um, the art form yet again, because he was such a fan and commissioned, you know, very famous cameos of his favorite mistress, Josephine, gave them as gifts to her. So, and then if you move forward yet again, right? So moving forward from there into the 20th century, um, you have a lava stone materials from Pompeii, a lot of stone cameos coming out of Pompeii. You know, there's always such a huge demand with the, tr with the trend of this art form um, of cameos that it, whether they're authentic materials or it's being produced as costume jewelry, maybe with slightly less expensive metals and stones, or um, being produced completely as you know, as fakes. Um, there's always a market for every one of those things. Uh, and they, it's almost like you can never make enough of these to keep people traveling through certain regions happy because they always want to buy them. So you had that in the 20th century. You had a lot of, sh again, a lot of shell, a lot of lava stone, sometimes out of coral. You'll find them made out of coral coming out of the Mediterranean as well. And then move forward yet again, right? And so present day, you have millennials and, and you have boomers who have never ceased being, um, you know, loving and adoring uh, costume jewelry and cameo pieces. So whether, you know, it's, it, it's lower grade pieces uh, and costume jewelry pieces that people are wanting to collect and wear and use because they love them so much, or the upper echelon of different societies and cultures and nations seeking after finer, uh, say, precious gemstones and shell work. 
right up until present day, this is an artistry that has stood the test of time for its appeal. Even now, costume jewelry pieces, you know, um, are made for people to wear because they love them so much that they're just seeking out costume jewelry pieces, complete fakes, um, with no real material involved, just to wear them. So that's a little bit of the history of cameos and I'll do a part two video. I'm going to talk to you about all of these fakes in more detail. Cheers.